Yo, there has never been a wrestler I've hated more in my life than Prime Edge. From 2005 until 2009, if you were watching wrestling and you heard, You think you know me. Yo, you better hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your championships because Edge was coming and he was taking it all. Without a doubt, this man was the slimiest, the scummiest, the most disgusting, just the biggest piece of shit. There is no doubt in my mind that this man right here was the biggest super villain of our childhoods. It all started in 2005 when he took Matt Hardy's girl. While poor Matt Hardy was out in nursing a knee injury at home, Edge started nursing Lita on the road. The WWE found out and made it a whole TV storyline. And once that happened, it was a wrap because Edge not only took Matt Hardy's girl, he then proceeded to beat Matt Hardy's ass live on pay-per-view. He took the man's girl and then left his ass a bloody mess in front of millions of people. And then he danced on his grave. Yo, Edge did Matt Hardy so dirty that, yo, if a man did me like how Edge did Matt Hardy, I'm going out shooting. But nah, man, as the weeks went by, Edge and Lita just got worse and worse. Once he had Lita by his side, it was GG because they would come out and every week just wild out on the Raw roster and then proceed to have like the nastiest, sloppiest, the most disgusting makeout sessions every single week. Less than a year into his run, this man took Matt Hardy's girl, beat his ass in front of millions of people, sent him packing to SmackDown, and then walked into New Year's Revolution 2006 and took John Cena's championship. Man, this will forever be the biggest bitch move I have ever seen in my life. Poor John Cena was sitting in there in his own blood, and after surviving the Elimination Chamber after outlasting six other men, he was still champion. It's like, yo, what a happy ending. But no, there are no happy endings when Edge is involved. Out comes Edge with his Money in the Bank briefcase, he cashes it in, and he hits him with two spears and ends up becoming the WWE Champion. Yo, I'm not lying to you when I say that this moment traumatized me as a kid. This moment legit had me in shock, and this was a moment where I decided that I will never, ever like Edge. I made it my life's mission to hate on Edge. I was going to be the Patrick Beverly of hating Edge. Yo, trust me, you had to be there to understand. I was watching this live, and I was so close to tears. I was Seven years old and John Cena was my favorite wrestler. John Cena was my hero and John Cena always won and he always survived and he did. That was the thing. He did win the match. He did survive. But then this guy, this piece of shit just came in there and took the championship and nah, th this moment changed me as a kid. The next night he proceeded to celebrate that championship win by having a live sex celebration. Bro, what? How is this even allowed? Imagine being seven years old and your favorite wrestler gets clapped by this guy and the next night you gotta watch him have sex on live TV while you watch with your grandma. Do you guys see why I hate this man? Edge was just a sick, sick, twisted man. Not only did he take girlfriends and championship belts, yo, for some reason he also loved abusing old men for no reason. I remember watching Raw and all I see is Edge just beating up a 57-year-old Ric Flair in a TLC match. Why the f*** was Ric Flair in a TLC match? All you see is Ric Flair bleeding all over the damn place, getting suplexed off a ladder and just dying, and Edge is just there having the time of his life abusing this poor old man. Of course, this was also the year he speared Mick Foley through a flaming table, but do you guys remember what he did in the mixed tag match at One Night Stand 06? As everyone knows, right, this is a wrestling pin, right, this is how you win a match. Nah, not for Edge. This is how he won the match. That is another man's wife. I am telling you, he is a sick, sick, twisted man. He needed to be stopped, right? He was running around doing this to another man's wife the same night he cost Cena the championship, and then a few weeks later, he casually went to John Cena's house and slapped his dad in the living room. This, this guy was possessed. He was just the definition of evil. I'm surprised he didn't wrestle in, like, black air forces. Yo, he needed to be stopped, man. He needed to be stopped, but, but that, that was a problem. He could never be stopped because every time he got clapped, every time someone did anything to Edge, yeah, he would disappear for a bit, but he would always come back and he would always come back even stronger, even scummier, even slimier. This man was like the Frieza of WWE. Let me show you what I mean, okay? So John Cena threw this man into a lake, right? He threw him off a ladder into a bunch of tables. He beat him in a cage match. And I remember watching WrestleMania 23. When Jeff Hardy dropped the leg drop on him, it looked like Edge died. It literally looked like Edge died and that was a greatest moment of my life. Seeing Edge get carried away on a stretcher, I was like, yes, he's dead, he's gone, he's not winning this match, hallelujah, Edge is not a problem anymore. But no, 
No, because he only came back slimier and scummier. It was May 2007 and it was an episode of SmackDown. The main event was super hyped up and it was for the World Heavyweight Championship. It was Batista versus The Undertaker. Both men escaped at the exact same time and The Undertaker, he got clapped no doubt, but he was still walking out champion and it was respectable. The Undertaker was a respectable champion, but then, you know, Mark Henry's music played and I'm like, okay. So Mark Henry just beats up The Undertaker, leaves him lying there dead and it's like, all right, cool, Mark. I don't know why you're acting up. Not like the Undertaker is going to beat your ass next week. It was minor. Mark Henry was not a problem. And I was like, all right, cool. What a great episode of SmackDown. I can't wait for next week. It was amazing. You know, it's time to go to sleep. But then it happened. You think you know me. On SmackDown, on the CW, on the show that was supposed to be my safe place on Friday night, on the night that I was not supposed to see him, out came Edge. Yo, he had the briefcase in his hand and it was happening again. It, it was literally happening again. It was like deja vu. Remember how I said he traumatized me in 06 when he cashed in on John Cena? Well, you know what? This was worse. This was on SmackDown. This was on the show he wasn't even on. He was a Raw wrestler, but nah, nah, here he is. Yo, SmackDown was my safe space, okay? This was supposed to be the show that he would never appear my edge guard was all the way down i was chilling i was relaxing but no here he comes out there once again and once again he finesses the system and becomes world heavyweight champion the poor undertaker is lying there in his blood he is deader than usual and edge just goes in there and becomes champion and at that point that's when it hit me that's when i realized yo it didn't matter if it was raw it didn't matter if it was smackdown it didn't matter if you were injured at home because he'll take your wife on the road and if you aren't at home it doesn't matter he'll go home and slap your dad like it didn't matter if you were 57 years old it didn't matter if you were a dead man edge was always going to tweak and yo i swear to you this was the worst thing he ever did because once edge came to smackdown this man reached another level i thought edge was bad on raw but no 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 once he came to smackdown down, it was over. Edge for the next few years would go on to pillage, ravage, just destroy SmackDown with the scummiest tactics I had ever seen in my life. Every time there was a match where I'm like, oh my god, Edge is finally gonna die. No, he, he never died. He always won with a roll up. He won by escaping the cage, running through the crowd. Every time I'm like, yo, he's finally gonna get clapped. He never did. And if by some divine miracle he did get clapped, it, it didn't matter. Okay, <laughs> it didn't matter. In July of 2007, he actually got injured and that meant he had to give up his title. He had to surrender render the title and he was no longer a champion and I remember being so happy just sitting there watching Edge in the ring he was crying and he gave the title to Teddy I was really happy I'm like yo the bad man's gone great but no it was not great because he always came back and he always came back scummier than ever. It was November of 2007. Edge had been gone for four months. Four months of bliss. Four months of awesomeness. Four months of not seeing his stupid face. And it was Survivor Series 07. It was Batista and The Undertaker in an amazing Hell in a Cell match. Everything was fine and I really wanted Batista to win as usual. And I thought that it was going to happen, right? I was pretty confident. And then all of a sudden, the cameraman starts tweaking. Yes, the cameraman. <laughs> Yo, this guy, Edge disguised himself as a cameraman in the Hell in a Cell and just went in there and just started beating up everyone. He hit him with a camera, got a bunch of chairs, just blasted everyone's head, just left everyone a bloody mess, and he was back. Just like that, Edge was back. And at first, I was like, all right, whatever. You know, Taker and Batista are going to kill him. You know, it's no problem. But no. No, it was a huge problem because at Armageddon 07, the next month on pay-per-view, it was a triple threat match, Batista, Undertaker, and Edge. Well, you know what? We, we thought it was a triple threat match because that was not the case. This man brought stunt doubles to a wrestling match and not just one, but two. He brought in two idiots that looked just like him and basically had them around the ring playing dead, playing dummy. Bro, what the f- All you see is Edge getting clapped, but no, apparently it's not Edge. Then you see Edge getting clapped again. No, it's not Edge. Then you see like two edges on the floor while another edge is in the- I, I can't, I can't. He, uh, you already know what happened. He finessed the system and he walked out champion once again. Bro, what? How? Where? Who? Huh? Nah, it, it was too much. This guy was using military tactics in a wrestling match. This guy was out here using guerrilla warfare, using dummy. I, I can't, I can't. So, he was world champion once again, right? But that wasn't enough for Edge. Nah, 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 nah. He wanted to reach another level of peak sliminess. He needed protection. He needed security. He needed a way to ensure that he stayed at the top. 
So what does he do? He ends up in a relationship with Vicky Guerrero. Vicky Guerrero basically becomes Edge's sugar mama and these two buffoons begin to run SmackDown. Every week they would come out and these bozos would screw over all of SmackDown. The clips of Edge and Vicky kissing legit make me want to gag. Edge was that desperate. Edge was that slimy and disgusting that he got with Vicky Guerrero and yo, they were the definition of evil. I remember Vicky made a TLC match at One Night Stand Away and the stipulation was if if the Undertaker lost to Edge, he had to be forced to leave the WWE. So what happens in the match? Well, Edge and Vicky have like the f armed forces basically go out there like it's a desert storm operation and they make sure that the Undertaker does not win this match. Edge wins the match and the Undertaker was banished from the WWE. Nah, yo, Edge was a sick, sick man. At one point, he was even engaged to Vicky Guerrero. They were going to get married on an episode of SmackDown. But luckily, at the wedding, Triple H came out and showed Vicky and the world footage of Edge cheating on Vicky. And this resulted in the wedding getting called off and Vicky went crazy. Vicky went mental, she caught off the wedding, she hated Edge, and she made sure that Edge was gonna pay for this. So what she does is make Edge take on The Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell match. And everyone's like, yay, Edge is finally gonna get clapped, everything's gonna catch up to Edge, it's the end, it's over. And that's what happens, right? The Undertaker destroys Edge in a Hell in a Cell match, he choke slams him from a ladder through the ring, sets it on fire, basically killing Edge, and it's like, yes, finally, he's done, he's dead, Edge is over, like we can move on with our lives. But no, no. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? It was November of 2008, okay? Edge had disappeared, Edge was dead, and now Jeff Hardy stepped up, and Jeff Hardy really took Edge's place, and now he was the top guy on SmackDown. Everyone wanted to see Jeff Hardy become the WWE Champion, and he was so close. So Survivor Series 08, the main event was going to be a triple threat match. Jeff Hardy versus Vladimir Kozlov versus Triple H for the WWE Championship. And this was finally going to be the night that Jeff finally wins the big one. But right before the show, news comes out that Jeff Hardy was found unconscious at his hotel and that he wouldn't be able to wrestle at the show. So the match became Vladimir Kozlov versus Triple H. Great, amazing. So the match is taking place and everyone's like, yo, we want Jeff, where is Jeff? We want Jeff. And everyone is just hoping and praying that Jeff Hardy comes in and wins the match. So 10 minutes into the match, they're obviously having a five-star classic, right? It's Kozlov and Triple H, five-star classic. Out comes Vicky Guerrero. And at this point, I had never been so happy to see Vicky Guerrero in my life and she comes out and she's all happy she's excited and she's like we promised you a triple threat match and that's what you're gonna get everyone's like yo really really it's happening and she starts screaming he's here he's here he's here and I was so amped I was ready I was about to do my Jeff Hardy dance I'm jumping for joy and then all you hear you think you know me. Bro, what kind of sick joke is that? Why, why is he here? I thought Edge was dead. I thought Edge was done, but no, apparently Edge came back from the dead in a match that I, I never in my wildest dreams thought Edge was going to be involved. He went in there and for like the 50th time in three years, he went in there and he ruined everything. I wanted Jeff Hardy to win the championship. Somehow, Edge walks out the champion. I can't, I can't, I can't. It, it just became a routine. It just became like clockwork. It was like, yo, every like four months, I'm sorry, my guy, but Edge is coming in. Edge is going over. Edge is going to ruin everything. It doesn't matter. You can kill him, put him through tables, put him through the ring, set him on fire, put him through a ladder. It didn't matter. No matter what, this guy always came back. He always came back. He became champion. He prevailed slimier and scummier than ever. Edge always prevailed. It, it, it would be like the most random pay-per-views no way out 2009 right he goes in as champion he loses in three minutes oh doesn't matter i guess i can't be wwe champion i'll just go become world heavyweight champion i'll just go beat up kofi kingston before his match and just become the champion like yo this is the thing it's like rules didn't apply for edge this guy broke all the rules he bent all the rules whatever he wanted he did this this guy was the worst he was the ultimate super villain yo nobody was safe and i i hate i literally hate this man what this man did from 2005 until 2009 it's illegal he needs to be arrested he should have been prosecuted i i i can't there has never been a wrestler and there never will be a wrestler who will ever be on his level of being as slimy as scummy and as disgusting as him this man is single-handedly responsible for 98 percent of my childhood trauma for all the ptsd i have it's because of this guy it, it was just too much man no matter what show what championship he would always be there he would just be ready to ruin it all this man I, I swear to you he gave me ptsd whenever something good happened as a kid while i was watching wrestling whenever something 
something positive happen in the back of my head i was always there like oh shit what if, what if i hear that sound you think you know me Yo, man, it was just too much. But yeah, man, jokes aside, respect to Edge. At the end of the day, Edge is responsible for so many moments of our childhood that we're never gonna forget. Even though in the moments we hated it, even though it hurt, even though he did everything to ruin everything for us, he was actually making the moments for us. Because of Edge, I'm never gonna forget when he cashed in against Cena or The Undertaker, when he came back to ruin everything for Jeff Hardy. A movie or a TV show can only be as good as the villain, and it's the same thing for WWE. Edge was the perfect villain for the perfect era, and Edge literally made our childhoods. So yo, do I still hate Edge? Of course. Will I always hate Edge? Of course. He's always going to be my number one villain, my number one enemy. But at the end of the day, I know deep down that this man made our childhood so, so special. At the end of the day, I am so glad that I grew up in the era where I got to see Edge be the villain of my childhood.